Hello folks, today's the big day. I got all the parts and I'm going to be building myself a new computer. I'll be using it for video and photo editing and some games. Uh, this computer will replace the machine I built about three years ago. So I figured I'd share the build because sometimes it's interesting to see what others are putting together. Uh, it's not going to be a super high-end machine compared to some of the builds out there, but uh, it's enough to get me excited and it'll be plenty of power for my current uses. I'm not going for water cooling or tons of RGB lighting or anything like that. Uh, just a simple, quiet, low-maintenance build with good performance. So let's start with my component choices. Uh, as you can see, the case here that I'm going with is the Fractal Design Define C case. Uh, I think Fractal Design cases are a good value. Uh, they generally have uh, good quality and uh, a good set of practical features for the cost. Uh, so I've, I've used Fractal cases a lot in the past, and I really like them. And the Define Series cases are kind of their what they call silent cases, but really they're just, you know, they have some sound deadening and some design features to make them a little bit quieter. So I went with that, so it would be a fairly quiet case. And uh, all the other features that it has supports uh, what I'm going to build, so uh, this case was going to work perfect for me. So the processor I chose for this is the Intel Core i7-8086K. It's the new limited edition processor from Intel, uh, basically a higher binned 8700K processor. I'm sure arguments could be made for other processors over this one, uh, but I do have a video of my thoughts on this processor that kind of gives you an idea of why I picked it. Uh, so if you're curious, you can check that out. But uh, overall, either way, it should be a pretty good processor. should give good gaming performance and a good just kind of general performance for productivity and general use. For motherboard, I went with the Asus Prime uh, Z370A motherboard. This motherboard hit a good balance for me in terms of uh, having all of the feature sets that I wanted uh, at a decent price. So so I probably won't overclock right out of the gate, but this does leave me the option to overclock down the road. And uh, it had all of the input and output kind of features I wanted and, and the layout that I was looking for. So uh, this is the motherboard I'll be using. For RAM, I wanted 32 gigabytes. And this Ballistic Sport kit is just about the cheapest way I could get uh, 32 gigabytes right now. Uh, RAM prices are still pretty darn high. Uh, this kit has four 8 gigabyte modules, DDR4 at 2666, uh, so it should be a pretty good kit either way. For the main OS and program drive, I went with this Samsung 970 Evo NVMe M.2 drive in a 500 gigabyte capacity, uh, so that should give me plenty of speed and plenty of capacity for the operating system and whatever programs or games I want to put on there. For the video card, I went with this EVGA SC2 uh, GTX 1080. I had kind of thrown around the idea of a 1070 or 1070 Ti uh, before finally just deciding to go with the 1080 because it'll be more than enough for my current uses and with the current graphics card market it wasn't really all that much more expensive than uh, 1070 or 1070 Ti. And the SC2 has EVGA's new ICX cooler so uh, should be a pretty good card. For the operating system, uh, just Windows 10 Home Edition, nothing too exciting there. A lot of mixed feelings on this operating system, but uh, it is what it is. It's Windows. Nothing too exciting here. Uh, just a couple of Western Digital Blue, uh, just standard 3.5-inch hard disk drives just for additional storage. For the CPU cooler, I went with the Noctua NH-U14S. Uh, it's a fairly large, single-tower cooler. It comes with a single NFA-15 fan, uh, but it does have the ability to run an additional second fan. Uh, so I went ahead and picked up a second fan for it, just because... Uh, adding a second fan doesn't really add a ton of noise, but it does add some additional cooling. So, For case fans, I went with Noctua again. Uh, I went with their NF-S12A fan. These fans have very low noise while still having uh, pretty competitive uh, flow and static pressure ratings. So at least in terms of specs, uh, uh, these fans have uh, really good numbers. Not the highest flow rate fan out there, but for their noise level, they pretty much are. Now the way I want to set up the fractal case I'm using is I am going to have four total case fans, all 120 millimeter. The case does come with two 120 millimeter fractal fans. Uh, in general, the fractal fans seem pretty good, but um, I did want to add two additional fans and I went with this one. And since these are rated at higher flow, higher static pressure, and less noise than the included fractal fans, I just went ahead and got a couple of extras. So I'm just going to replace the included fans with these, so all four of the case fans will be uh, this Noctua NF-S12A. 
And finally, to power it, I went with the EVGA Supernova 650G3, uh, 650 watt fully modular power supply, 80 plus gold rated. Again, I like the feature set. Uh, the cables that it comes with are going to work out really well for the build. And 650 watts should be plenty for this setup. So there you have it. There's all the parts I'll be using. Should be a pretty balanced, solid performer. So let me start unpacking this stuff, opening everything up, and uh, I'll get started on the build. All right, so for starters, I'm prepping the case. Uh, I got all the panels off of it, and I got the two stock fans removed. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and install the four Noctua case fans. I'm going to go with three fans in the front and uh, one exhaust fan in the back. And the way this case works is you have your drive cage right here, and there's actually a panel that can cover this uh, front portion of the power supply shroud. Or you can take this cover off, slide the drive cage up a little bit. I already have the screws loosened on the bottom. And then that will allow you to fit a third 120 millimeter fan in the front here. And I'm going to do that because it's going to help uh, bring in some more cool air down here towards the bottom where the video card is going to be drawing from. And it will also help push a little bit of air over the uh, two hard drives. Now a lot of people don't have a lot of nice things to say about the color choice that Noctua uses for their fans. Uh, but I gotta say, to me, it almost kind of reminds me of an old luxury car, like maybe an old Mercedes, with the tan leather and wood interiors. It harkens of luxury and quality. <laughs> or you could just say it's fecal brown, whatever. Uh, and speaking of nasty color, um, you'll see normal wrist and stung by a wasp wrist. So. Uh, just ignore the swollen, puffy red wrist I have right now. Alright, so I got the case fans installed, and admittedly, the standard Noctua colors don't really go with a whole lot of cases if you're going to go for a certain theme or a certain style. Uh, they're not really going to fit with a lot of different color themes. Uh, so I do get that, but uh, this case won't have a window. It's going to be totally closed up. Uh, it's not going to be on display or anything like that. You won't see the fans or the color, so it doesn't really matter to me for this build. All right, moving on, but just real quick, I wanted to point out something kind of neat that this motherboard comes with. It is this little uh, front panel connector. So all those tiny little wires for power switch, reset, a hard drive light, that kind of thing. Uh, all that stuff that can be kind of a pain to get onto the board, especially once you have everything installed. Uh, this little connector allows you to just plug the connectors from your case directly into this. And then this it just is a one piece that can just plug directly down onto the board. So. Not really that big of a deal, but just a neat little convenience feature and uh, kind of nifty. Uh, so I got the M.2 drive installed, and another feature of this board is this uh, kind of built-in heat spreader for the M.2 drive. It's even got a thermal pad on the back of it, and that just mounts right here over top of the drive. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that it's necessary or will really help all that much, uh, but since it's there, I might as well use it. And I figure it's not going to be doing as much with the sticker on there, so I went ahead and pulled the sticker off. Uh, so I'll get this uh, backing pulled off of this thermal pad, I'll get that reinstalled, and we'll go on from there. And you'll notice uh, I do already have the processor in the socket. I uh, didn't bother showing that on camera. There's tons of videos online showing an Intel processor install. So uh, processor's in, M.2 drive's installed. I'll get that heat spreader put back on, and we'll move on. Ooh. Uh, why is it so fun to pull this kind of stuff off? Oh, that one kind of failed on there a little stiffer than I thought it would be. Either way, still fun to peel. So even though this isn't a windowed case, up until the Noctua fans I did have a little bit of a color theme going on. Kind of a kind of a black and white theme with the board being all kind of black and white, the inside of the case being black, and my choice of RAM stick being white. Uh, it did all kind of fit until the Noctua fans just blew that out of the water. But such is life. You come up with a perfect plan that works great right up until it doesn't. Alright, so now I'll get the CPU cooler mounted and I can start getting stuff put in the case. And as for that whole color scheme thing, the Noctua fans on the CPU cooler kind of blow that away too. Honestly, I was this close to getting the black Noctua fans for everything, but they were more expensive and I just decided with a closed case, not quite worth it. So I got all the hardware mounted for the CPU cooler. Noctua's mounting system really is nice. It just seems like high quality, goes together easy, seems really sturdy. And if you'll notice, I'm actually going to try out the IC Graphite thermal pad on this build. So if I have any temperature issues, uh, I may try swapping it out. But at least to start with, uh, that's what I'll have on there. Coolers installed, everything went together easily, no issues. 
and it's a tight fit but the fit is fine there's no uh, interference nothing's hitting so i think we're just about ready to start putting stuff in the case ladies and gentlemen the motherboard is in the case i did have a moment of doubt on the side cover fitting over top of these fans because the fans actually stick up uh, just a bit more even than the very top of the heat sink uh, but it does fit doesn't hit so all's good there Ooh, it's a thing of beauty and a thing of surprising heft and lots of fun stuff to peel all right just covered in stuff to peel off video card is in looking good and still i'm finding more stuff to peel on it so satisfying coming right along manufacturers must know how much fun it is to peel stickers because even the case power button has a little piece of plastic to peel off all the front panel connectors are in place connected and routed somewhat acceptably time to put in the power supply And that's that. Power supply is mounted. I got all the appropriate cables already connected to it and fed through. So they're all ready to run and get uh, landed where they need to go. But before I get all this stuff run where it needs to go, I'll probably end up uh, blocking this area pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and get the hard drives installed in the bays and uh, we'll move on from there. All right, hard drives are in. Power and SATA cables are connected. Uh, that should be all ready to go. Last but not least, just have to run the power to the motherboard and the graphics card and I uh, can start buttoning this thing up, should be ready to go. All right, so I think we should be good to go. Everything's powered up, all the cables are run, even the eight pin CPU power connector behind the heatsink there. Everything is seated tight and uh, ready to go. So before I put the case back together, I'll go ahead and power it up, make sure it posts, uh, make sure all that's good. Uh, then I'll button the case up and start installing windows. And for anybody wondering, there's my glorious cable management. Okay, maybe not glorious, functional. There's my functional cable management. So I got the computer powered up, uh, posted with no issues, went into the BIOS, checked to make sure everything was detected, everything set properly, and now I'm just going to get started installing Windows. I did purchase uh, this copy of Windows, and I'm going to use the key that came with it, but I did make myself a Windows install USB with the latest build of Windows 10 on it, so that I don't have to use whatever version comes with this box, because I found that a lot of times the version that you buy is older than the current build so then as soon as you get it installed it has to try and update to the latest build anyways and then you're wasting time so before all the pieces of the computer even came in i just went ahead and made myself a usb installer with the latest build and i'm just going to use this key that i purchased to install it and i'm not going to bother to show the entire install process it's pretty straightforward there's lots of videos showing how to do it and frankly it's pretty boring so <laughs> no sense showing all that on camera so there it is computer's built windows is up and running uh, everything's working like it should. Just have to install some drivers and things, get stuff set up the way I want. But otherwise, uh, build's complete. So I think that pretty much does it for this video. Just wanted to share and show the build. But if anybody's curious or wants a follow-up video that shows some benchmarks or kind of performance numbers or anything like that, uh, just post it up down below. Um, and as always, if you have questions, post them up down below. Thank you for watching. Take care.